Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. Hopefully you're enjoying this Webpack 2 series. Let me know in the comments. And in today's video, we will look at more advanced Webpack dev server configuration. Before we dive into the configuration of the Webpack dev server, the one thing I wanted to point out is the difference between using Webpack in the development mode and the webpack dev server is that the webpack itself renders and writes these files on the disk but when we are running the webpack dev server the files are served from a memory okay so to prove that if i go back to the development mode and we run npn run dev we'll see the files changing. Okay, so the app has the red. If we change it to blue, you'll see that the file itself is changing on the disk. Once we run it again, I forgot to keep it in the watch mode. You'll see that the file on the disk is changing. Okay, but if we delete all these files, and now run the webpack dev server. You see that we can still access the files, but nothing has been written on the disk. Okay, so we can still access it. We can still see it in the browser, but there's nothing written in here. Okay, so that is the difference between using webpack itself and webpack dev server. Webpack dev server, serves all these files from a memory, but Webpack itself writes them on the disk. To create a custom configuration for the Webpack dev server, we need to go to the webpack.config.js and create a new option inside of the object here. We'll call this dev server and inside of this object will be our settings. To see all the options that uh, you can use for your dev server, refer to the dev server documentation. And we'll start by copying the first simple configuration inside of our object. The first option sets the content base. So that is the folder from where we want to serve our files, which in our case, it is the same. So we're using the distribution folder Compress will compress the files, will gzip all the files, and we are setting the port to 9000. Okay, I save the web config and run it again. And now we have changed the port. We're serving the files from the same folder as before. So nothing should change in the browser apart from the port being served now 9000. Then we're compressing the files and then we're setting the code content base to be our distribution folder. If we search the docs for the compress option, you'll see that it enables GZ compression for everything served and below is the content base details. As your application or web project grows, you will see this log from Webpack dev server being very, very long and it becomes quite annoying to see all of this every time you save a file. And for that, there is an option to show errors only. So if we set the stats to errors only and run it again, we should see much more compressed log. And instead of all the tasks being run, we only see the final message that Webpack bundle is now valid. So if I now go to app CSS, change it back to red, you see that the message has changed only slightly instead of re-rendering all the nodes. If you want to see more options for the stats, same thing, just search stats inside of the documentation and you'll see all the other option. You'll see all the other options minimal, none, normal, and verbose. And the last thing we can configure here is to set the open to true. 
and this will open a new window every time we run it. So let's say you're starting the project from scratch, you've got everything closed and you're running the webpack for the first time, npm run dev, you will get a new window when the dev server starts. Okay, so this is quite handy. And now when you change anything, it doesn't open. So this is very handy when you're starting the project for the first time. Now let's remove the port and keep it the 8080 by default. And let's quickly recap what we've done in this video. We changed the dev script to point to the Webpack dev server. And then inside of the Webpack config, we've added another property which includes object defining the Webpack dev server configuration. The first one is a content base where we're pointing to the dis destination or the distribution folder. Then we're compressing the files, changing the errors only. So inside of here, if I open app.scss and I make a mistake and I save the file, we now see the invalid message. So this is the error showing up, but once the file is valid without any errors, then it compiles and gives us this Webpack bundle is now valid message. And the last thing inside of the Webpack config is the open true, which opens the new browser window when we run the dev server for the first time. And that's it all for today. Hope you've learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let me know in the comments what do you think about this series. Until next time, happy coding, bye.